Hi guys, in this video I'm building a pair of inexpensive BF109 F4 from ICM in 148 scale. ICM made a few different boxings for their 109, which all share the same sprues for the aircraft itself, with the addition of figures, decals or extra ornaments depending on the kit. Some parts have less detail than more expensive kits, but overall these models are easy and fun to build. So the build starts with an engine as one of the 109s will have the engine panels opened up. I added some missing pipes and cables that I made from pieces of stretched screw. Next I added some grey primer with the airbrush and used Vallejo model color to paint the details with a brush. There is no decal included for the instrument panel, so I painted the instruments black and then added the white gouges with the tip of a fine brush. Both cockpits were glued inside the fuselage and as you can see only one plane will have an engine installed. To achieve a better fit I like to scrape away some plastic, right here, before gluing the main wing to the fuselage. Next the engine panels were glued together to build up the nose and a few pieces of stretch sprue were used to create the machine guns in front of the pilot. The sand filter for the air intake has no detail at all and resembles a closed intake which would be the case when the airplane was on the ground to protect the engine from sand and dust. However, I prefer the air filter in its open position. I think this looks more interesting, and who knows, perhaps it got jammed during the flight or it was opened up for maintenance. So I've cut off the front hemisphere with a knife, and then sliced that in two pieces. Some scrap was used to fill up the hole on the backside. Next, the tip of a knife was used to add some panel lines and a metal grid for the sand filter was carved out too. Then the sand filter was added to the air intake and hollowed out with a Dremel tool. Next I installed the flaps and radiator flaps. The lower radiator flaps were connected to the flaps with a rather complicated mechanical system, so I recommend gluing them both at the same angle. Next it is time to add the canopies. I masked them off with Tamiya masking tape and used a fine blade to cut out the contours. The canopies were then glued in place with some wood glue. I masked off the engine and open cockpit and added a light grey primer with the airbrush to both planes. I don't like the look of the molded nose cannon, so I removed the cannon by drilling a hole through the spinner and then used a small plastic tube that I found in my scrap box, which was cut to length and glued in place with super glue to achieve a better looking nose cannon. More pieces of stretch screw were then used to create some brake lines and these were then glued onto the landing struts. I also have this other ICM kit which includes a sprue with 7 interesting figures. I decided to use 3 of them so they can work on the engine. Black and white surface primer were then used to cover the parts. Next the Tropic plane got a coat of Faleo Sand Yellow. I wanted to test out some camo masking putty I picked up from eBay so I used that to get a soft edge between the sand yellow and the light blue underside. Next I added more Tamiya masking tape to mask up the tail bands, nose and wingtips. And those were then sprayed white with Vallejo model air. Next a gloss varnish was added and the decals were applied to the micro set and sole. Tamiya masking tape was used to mask up the spinners, followed by a coat of black paint. And that modified nose cannon really pops out now. I didn't really like the look of the decal for the fuselage number, so I decided to cut my own mask from Tamiya masking tape. Those were then applied onto the fuselage and sprayed yellow with the airbrush. I will make a small vignette to present a North African plane, but to make things a bit more interesting I will also add this small cubal wagon. This small kit from Tamiya has great fittings and is easy to build. I masked off the windscreen on both sides added a primer and gave the whole vehicle a coat of dark yellow from ammo. Black and grey primer were used to prime the wheels and figures that came with the kit. Next I painted them with Vallejo model color. More details were painted with Vallejo and the model received a light pin wash with brown oil paint. The backside of the box showed a black field cap for the pilot figure, but looking at some reference photos, to me they seemed to be incorrect, so I mixed some white and khaki and repaint the field cap to match its desert uniform. I also spent some more time trying to improve a few highlights and shadows. Definitely not perfect, but I think it's usable. Back on the plane, a grey panel line wash was added to the underside. 
and brown oil paint tinned down with white spirit was used on top of the wings in the fuselage. A matte coat toned down the gloss varnish and some exhaust smoke was added with the airbrush. The vignette was made from a piece of 18mm MDF that I cut out with a jigsaw and the edge was shaped with a router bit. I have a few plastic containers filled with sand and small stones which I have collected outside. I started by gluing the largest stones randomly on the surface. Next the border of the base was masked off and different types of sands were added to the surface and held in place with heavily diluted wood glue. Some tire marks were created in the wet surface and the next day I covered everything with some black primer. I mixed some ogar tones to make it look like a desert terrain, dry brushed the surface and then masked on the sand so I could spray the edge of the base with a dark brown color. Some small pieces of vegetation were added with wood glue to make the surface look more interesting. By now it started to bother me that I didn't add the white border to the swastika on the tail. At the time this seemed too difficult to do, but now I really felt this needed to be corrected. So I've cut some pieces of Tamiya tape and masked out the contours for the white outline. Some small strips were cut and then placed between the legs. And of course the same thing was done on the other side of the tail as well. Then I covered the area with some thin layers of white paint and then the masking tape was removed. Fortunately I had saved my masks onto this piece of sticker paper so I was able to reuse them. It was a bit tricky because now I needed to align them exactly at the same position as before. Then I added some black paint again and then the moment of truth removing the masking tape. Well it might not be perfect but I think it looks better than my first attempt without the white outline. Next I added some weathering with oil paints. I put a few colors on a piece of cardboard and I'll use white spirit for blending and cleaning the brushes. I mixed a lighter tone of yellow sand and prepared the surface with white spirit. A lot of panel lines are missing on the wing so I tried to simulate the panels by adding small oil dots and then I slowly blend them in with a brush. The same technique with oil dots is used on the fuselage. I also used oil paints to add details like these fuel marks and to add some variation to the base color. The advantage of oil paints is that they stay workable for a long time, so you can blend and tone them down as you go along. Of course, shading a model like this is highly subjective, so it's a technique you'll have to adapt to your own liking. I also decided to correct the angle of the radiator flaps. I reapplied some Tamiya Extra Tin and brushed the insides with some RLM02. The navigation lights were removed with a Dremel bit. And then I applied two coats of Micro Crystal Clear, which is not the ideal product for this, but it will do the job. Once the liquid dried transparent, I mixed a small amount of color with gloss varnish and applied that to the navigation lights. We will continue with the tropic scene in a moment, but first let's paint the second 109. This model will receive a paint scheme based on an airplane that flew in Pantelleria in Italy with Jagdgeschwader 53. The model was first covered in grey blue, followed by a German dark green on the wings and the top of the fuselage. A splinter camouflage pattern was masked off with tape and the lighter green tone was used for the second camouflage color. That same green was then used to tone down the darker shades and to add some mottling onto the fuselage. White was used for the tailband and yellow for the underside of the nose. Next the airplane received the same treatment as the Tropic 109. A gloss coat, decals, panel wash, exhaust fumes and a matte varnish. But to make my life a bit easier this time, I ordered a sheet of swastika decals which will also come in handy for future models. So next I was looking at the model and I realized I totally forgot to paint those engine covers. So yeah, let's get back to work. So first I started by thinning down the edges of the panels by scraping them with a knife. I added a hole on the inside for the air intake and another one where the hand crank was inserted to start the engine. Next I used the airbrush to add grey Vallejo surface primer followed by a base color of grey blue. Then dark green was added on the top sides. 
The same dark green was used for the mottling effect. As you can see I always spray with the airbrush needle cap removed. The paint is thinned down and although I'm still spraying at about 15 psi, the actual pressure is reduced with the trigger. After the mottling I added a thin layer of light green to match the tone with the fuselage. The inside surface of the panels doesn't contain any detail, so I added a few pieces of stretch sprue just to improve them a little bit. Then I gave the inside a coat of RLM02 and added a gloss varnish to prepare the surface for the application of decals. The decal sheet for the Tropic Plane also contained two insignia for the Jagd de Schwader 53, so these were cut out and put in lukewarm water. Then I applied some micro set setting solution with a brush and the decal is put in position onto the panels. Any air bubbles need to be brushed out and I applied some microsol to make the decal fully conform to the surface. And the next day I sealed them in with another coat of gloss varnish. Then a dark brown panel wash is applied to accentuate a few details. And finally the gloss surface is toned down with a matte varnish. Next I drilled out the holes in the fuselage which were used to lift up the tail during maintenance. I ran into trouble when I tried to attach the antenna wire. The soft plastic and thin antenna mast prevented me from getting any tension on the wire. So I decided to cut two new antenna masts from a sheet of aluminum. I cleaned the edges with a sanding stick, removed the old one and carved an opening. Next I added some epoxy and glued the new mast in place. The antenna wires were then fitted with superglue. And I also like to add a few details to the wire with PVA glue. If you take your time you can even shape those glass cones, which are better visible with a lick of paint. The engine panels are also ready to be installed. And those panels should hinge from a metal bar in the center, which is missing, so I recreated a bar from a piece of guitar string. The engine panels were glued together and then attached to the rod with super glue. The armored headrest was also painted and then glued in the back of the canopy. And then all the final parts were assembled. So although these BF109 kits from ACM may not be the most detailed compared to some other brands, I definitely enjoyed building them. So I hope you liked the video, many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.